Hey guys, this is Kelly Powers coming to you from the Berean Perspective. Today is a very important time where I want to share something that's very personal to me, and particularly lately. If you've been following or for your subscriber at Berean Perspective, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. This video really is for those out there who are basically saying, why address people of the Word of Faith movement? Why Name names. Why address people like Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Todd White, Joyce Meyer, other people like Frederick Price, Cruffalo Dollar, and a host of others that are part of the Word Faith movement. I'm not going to have any special editing today. It's going to be a straight through shot. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the Word and just addressing why this is so important. If you haven't seen my last video that I just uploaded not too long ago on pastors, Preach the gospel, not a deception or counterfeit or watered down or traditional or whatever else, a twisting of the scripture's gospel that's happening today. We are living in a time where Christians, I'm going to say genuine Christians, are going to churches, but they do not know the word of God. And they may have been there for years. And if you're a pastor or a preacher or a leader right now in some way that you have some um, authority, if you will, God called you, whatever, and you're overseeing people, can I really encourage you? Discipleship is important. Christians do not know the Bible. They think they do, but they don't. And what I mean by that is they don't understand why uh, certain people or pastors or leaders are not teaching the truth. And there are people that I know and that I've seen who left the faith who became a Mormon or a Catholic or something else out there, and they did not understand the Word of God and what the differences were. And I know so many people who are caught up in the Word of Faith movement and the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation, people who follow your Bill Johnsons and your Todd Bentley and your Peter Wagner and others, and there's so much mumbo-jumbo going on today. And the Bible says in the latter days that people are going to fall away they're going to have itching and tickling ears, and they're going to grab on to people who they like to listen to. Now, let me be very clear from the very start here. Am I saying that everything that every single preacher or teacher who's a part of the Word of Faith teaches is absolutely false? Of course not. That would be stupid, because then nobody would listen to them, okay? Years ago, I used to listen to people like Joyce Meyer. I used to listen to someone named Marilyn Hickey. If she's even around or alive today, I don't even know. I used to listen to Kenneth Copeland back in the early 90s. I didn't know at the time that he was a false teacher and leading people astray. Until I started actually getting into the Word of God and actually understanding what the gospel is. This is the dividing line. I am not a Calvinist. I am definitely not on the same page as James White, who is a hardcore Calvinist, that we have a history of going back and forth years ago. Um, but whatever. But he has a show called The Dividing Line, and it's a very good name for it, because really when it comes down to um, false teachers, false preachers, whoever else is out there, counterfeits, the dividing line is this. So listen, if you are one of those who has been, uh, lately I've been getting some accusations by people on Facebook, on my YouTube, and other places saying, you know, Kelly, you're just be you're you're the deceived one. You're the one that's messing it all up. You are, you know, brushing it all together, and and, and your discernment is the problem, right? Be clear on what I'm about to share with you right now. Be clear, okay? If they have a different gospel, I don't care what else they have right. Let me say that one more time. If they have a different gospel. That's a counterfeit gospel, a false gospel, a twisted gospel. I don't care if they can walk on water, or they can pray and money falls from little trees, or if they say pray to someone and a pearl comes out of their ear. I don't care what they can do. If they have a different gospel, then that is of concern, and that's what we as Christians need to be sounding in alarm. Now, people like who are maybe newer to the faith. Maybe you're newer to the faith, you haven't been a Christian for very long, and maybe you're, and I use this in a loving way, so don't take this out of context. Maybe you're a little naive or ignorant and you don't know any better. 
that's understandable. But I'm talking right now to people who claim to be Christians for 20 plus years, maybe 15, 20, 30 years, and they're even in positions where they teach or have some kind of responsibilities in a church kind of atmosphere or leadership. And these people claim that people like Kenneth Copeland or Benny Hinn or Todd White or others, Bill Johnson, Todd Bentley's, these kind of guys, they're saying, hey, you know what? They, they, they may have some things off here or there, but don't, don't, don't throw the whole shebang out there. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Which faith... Word of faith preachers, would you say are good? And which one of them actually teach the right gospel? Which ones? Years ago, I thought Joyce Meyer was like dynamite. And I'm not even making, this is not even, in the early 90s when I started getting into apologetics, I became a Christian in 1977. I had a good foundation, but as a teenager, I kind of wandered up, did things here and there. But then in the early 1990s, if you know anything about me at all, I had a friend who became a Mormon, got me involved with apologetics. I didn't know what Mormonism was. He went being an atheist again. And then I started just really seeking what does it mean to be a Christian. Well, I was listening in the early 90s to Joyce Meyer. I would listen to her on the radio. I was like, dang, this chick is awesome, man. She's fired up. She's saying it like it is. But the problem was she was just giving good emotional speeches. There was nothing on solid doctrine. There was nothing on what discipleship is or how to truly get in the Word of God or the gospel or the doctrine of God or other things on sanctification. She was just giving good messages on field good stuff that any non-Christian can do. So then I started learning, and I'm not a big fan of Hank Kennegraff, don't get me started on him, but he was one of the guys that sat on the alarm back in the day because I used to like listening to the late Dr. Walter Martin, the original Bible Answer Man, and when Hank Hanegraaff took over, he was doing different things, and he had a book that came out called Christianity in Crisis. And that is definitely a good book. If you don't know about that book, Christianity in Crisis, it's an early 1990s book. I'm sure there's been some updates and additions today, but that was a great book. And then he was also on, his, on the Bible Answer Man show, where people would call in and ask about Joyce Meyer. And this is what started getting my curiosity. And so he basically shared in so many words, hey, this Joyce Meyer chick, pastor, whoever, however you want to be identified with her. I don't say that in an insulting way. This, this lady, Joyce Meyer, she's teaching something wrong. And I was like, oh, let me find out. So I wrote them, said, hey, I'd like to have this material myself so I can see it. So I got the transcripts and all that. And then I actually bought her book myself. So that way I would actually know. I'm going to put this on pause. I'm going to get it real quick. One sec. All right, I'm back. Okay. Woo! So here's the book I bought from Joyce Meyer, right? And in this book, she actually said that in How to Be Born Again, that you must believe that Jesus went to hell, died spiritually, and was basically born again. And then if you watch my videos, I have a couple of videos on it, and I was thinking on Benny Hinn and Ken Copa, and they all teach heretical stuff that Jesus was became the nature of Satan on the cross, had to go to hell, become spiritually dead in death, be tortured and, and, and attacked by the demons as like he's a sinner, and then he's born again on the third day, and that's and that's it. And then Kenneth Copeland actually has the gall to say that, well, you know what? God revealed to him one day that, you know, if you had the knowledge that Jesus had and the wisdom, you could have the exact same thing. And Kenneth Copeland, what did you say, God? You're saying that I could have did the same thing? And like, these are some heretical false teachings. So let me, let me be clear with you. I came out of some of this. I wasn't full-blown like some people have been in for years and years and years. My dad, my dad got caught up in this stuff for a time. And we actually had division where we got separated from one another. And he was actually saying things about me and accusing me of things, this and that. And it literally broke my heart. Those times where I was having panic attacks back in the 90s, late 90s, because of my heart was breaking for my dad because he was so caught up into the word of faith mumbo-jumbo. It was false, and it was causing division. And it was sad because it caused issues within our family. Now, praise God, because my dad got back into the book and was reading it for what it actually said and wasn't being tickling ears by them out there. So let me be clear and blunt to you out there who are Kenneth Copeland supporters or Benny Henners or whatever else, and you think people like myself are just doing something wrong, Okay. The Bible teaches, the Bible teaches this, okay? If you have a problem, 
Paul says, have I become your enemy for telling you the truth in Galatians 4.16? Look, you know what? Maybe I'm a little radical on some things, but I don't think I, I've ever said this in any of my videos yet. And, and let me tell you, Paul said that he wished that he was accursed himself for his fellow Jews. He knew that they had a zeal for God, Romans chapter 9. But he knew they were lost and deceived, and they were not following the truth. And he said, man, my heart breaks for them. I wish that I could give my life for them. And he knew he couldn't. Paul had such a strong um, response to those who preach a different gospel. Galatians 1. I don't know if we encourage you. Open your Bible. Paul says, I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Look at verse 8 and 9. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And if you didn't get it in verse 8, he backs it up in verse 9. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you have received, he is to be accursed. My fellow brothers and sisters, Christians, I don't know who you are out there. Maybe, you know, you're coming across this channel for the first time, whatever. I bury my testimony that the word of faith movement is false. Yes, there's going to be some things here and then the teacher, okay. But if they are a word of faith preacher who are in agreement with the heretical doctrines of the wealth and health and prosperity gospel, if they are a part of the movement where they actually teach, and as far as I know, uh, and still to this, to this exact day, what's the date today? September 29, 2019. As far as I know, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Todd White, Frederick Price, Marilyn Hickey, and a list of others that are out there all believe that Jesus did not pay the price fully upon the cross. Jesus had to go to hell, suffer and die like a sinner, become the nature of Satan, become the first born again man, and that is the gospel message. And some of them have went to the far, if you don't even believe that, you are not saved. That is distortion, that's heretical, and that's blasphemy. That is enough right there. You don't need anything else. They have a lot of other wacky theology. There's so much, today's gospel focused. If they have a different gospel, that right there should be saying something, you know what? Something is not right. Now, what bothers me even more so than all this is that churches, pastors, are not warning and teaching Christians how to read the Bible, how to know it for themselves, and be on guard for false teachers, right? On guard for false teachers. And this is the problem. I used to be part of a church years ago. I was an elder in a church. There's a few of us elders and a pastor and the denomination we were part of. Well, as I got involved as an elder, I didn't know all in the beginning with an elder. I was a, um, I was the adult Sunday school uh, coordinator and director for a few years. So I was I was the main guy doing a lot of discipleship and teaching. And then I eventually became an elder at this church. And then when I became even more involved as an elder, I found out more stuff behind the scenes. And the senior pastor and the denomination was actually supporting people who were part of the emergent church. And they were teaching things in their colleges. And then the senior pastor was endorsing people like your Benny Hens and your Joyce Myers and your T.D. Jakes and these other guys that were false teachers. And we had this confliction. And it was so bad. It got to so bad where I could no longer support him as being a true shepherd. And my wife, my wife and I, we had to step away. It was one of the most painful things we have ever done in our lives. It was painful. We lost literally most of our friends. Um, only a few handful, if that, not even that hung out with us after that and kept in touch because of his lies and deception. He, he twisted it around to him, but we quietly moved on out and we didn't try to make a big scene. Um, but it was because he was not willing to listen. And I tried to reason. I tried to talk with him and the elders and they were, they, they were yes men, unfortunately. And they bought into his mumbo jumbo. And he was a guy who did not want to hear the truth. And sadly, we had to move on. I speak from experience of being hurt. I speak from family. I speak being being a part of myself for the years. I speak firsthand that this stuff, that the word of faith teaches people, it, 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 it kind of like, it, it, it gets you to see things you don't see. And I don't want to insult you, but if you are a person 
who supports the word of faith people and believe. And, and this statement I get, I get this a lot of emails. Don't touch God's anointing. Don't, don't, don't be so, you know, don't judge them. And then all of a sudden they say to me, you're going to hell. Like, oh my gosh, seriously, people, did you not just step in your own poop? I mean, so seriously, here's the problem. Touch God's not anointed does not mean you can't examine. doesn't mean you can't critique. It doesn't mean you can't challenge. Touch God's anointed. Talk about if God truly calls someone in the Old Testament, he's going to be the one who's going to judge him or whatever else. But there's never a point, never a point where you cannot judge soundly with doctrine and warnings and signs and whatever else. Touch God's anointed has been taken so far out of rest by the far by the word of faith people, twisting things. And the followers think, oh, don't examine it, don't teach it, don't, you know, everything you must say is must be okay. It's as of a word from God. That is not true. The Bible says that you are to test all things and hold fast to that which is good and true. First Thessalonians 5, 21. You are to uh, challenge and examine any false teachers who teach a different gospel. Galatians chapter 1 talks about that. Jesus said, be careful of false prophets who come to you in what? sheep's clothing but inwardly they are wolves the scriptures are a plethora of warnings the early church had so many false teachers but we have so much more today and christian i feel sad for you because there's not enough sound doctrine being taught today and that's the problem with that last video that i did and i would encourage you please check out that last video because i addressed the issue of lack of true leadership by pastors today where christians are being led astray and they do not know with the gospel is. We need to know the whole Bible. Genesis through Revelation. It doesn't mean you're going to understand everything, but we need to get the whole picture. So here's the problem. There's going to be some of you out there who are not going to like this video. <laughs> Probably a lot of you, and that's okay. But the Word of Faith movement is, it, it's its one of the biggest snares today in the Christian church. You, I, I go to, I go, I call them bookstores that sell Christian things, but they call them Christian bookstores. I can go into these bookstores and you walk around, right, and you see Bibles and cool t-shirts and people are smiley. And then you start looking at the bookshelf and you see rows of people of your Charles Cap, your, your Benny Hens. Joyce Meyer has like, you know, hey, there's different rows, you know, like they have my shelves over here. She has a whole shelf, like top, boom, 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 all of her books. Oh my gosh, right? You know, the Bible talked about when Jesus went into the temple and he was, you know, in the court, and he's, he's flipping up the tables, and he's bringing out the whips and doing this and that. And people are freaking out. He goes, you've made my father's house a den of thieves. These places that are apparently called Christian bookstores, they're making cash. Cash. Maybe not millions, but they're making cash of selling these false books and supporting these false thieves. Not too long ago, I was in a bookstore in this area, and I'm not lying to you at all. Let me, let me be very clear, I'm going to tell you. There was a Quran in there for sale. There was a Book of Mormon in there for sale. They have taught a Rod, Rob Bell's books in there for sale. There's so many things that are in there. I'm going, what the heck is wrong with you? Right? Bottom line is, we have become so blind to discernment today. And I really want to encourage you, if you're a Christian today, let me get on a different note, a little softer tone here. <sighs> Pray. Read the Bible, the whole Bible, not selected verses. You know, there are some good, solid Bible pastors and preachers out there that you can get online stuff. And if you want some help with some of those guys, you know, send me a message or whatever else. There's some good guys out there. But as a whole, we're not getting the good discernment. A lot of churches that I've been a part of over the years and different ones that have been involved with ministry and some not, um, this, is, this is the number one thing I have seen as a whole. As a whole, I'm not saying they're all bad people, but the number one thing that's lacking, discipleship. Good, solid teaching throughout the week, home groups where people can be mentored, ask questions. Whatever. And a lot of these Christians, they go on a Sunday morning, they get a nice, good message. Sometimes it's not nice and good. It's just a message, and you're like, what the heck? Did I just listen to, yay, could have stayed home and slept. But but they're not getting taught the Word of God, and they're not being warned about. The dangers out there, right? And so, yeah, you may not like this video, and that's okay. I expect that. But I share this because I want you to know the videos that I have done and the things that I've written on my website, rootinchrist.org. Uh, rootinchrist.org is my main website. I've had it on for years. And I haven't written a whole lot, but I'm getting back into writing again. But check it out. 
you know, and I provide sources for what I say. I don't make stuff up. And, and that's something that I've learned. I learned that from late Dr. Walter Martin. He says, if you're going to make a statement on something, you have to back it up, right? And so I back up why I believe Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, people like Benny Hinn and others, Todd White, are not true, genuine uh, people, teachers of God, that they are charlatans, deceivers, because number one, they're preaching a different gospel and a different Jesus. And I, and I know people are going to say, oh, that's, you're, so, you're like a Pharisee, man. Dude, you're just like the Pharisees during the Jesus time. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm one of those guys saying, hey, you know what? The Bible says be careful. The Bible says be careful of those who twist the word of God, twist the gospel, and are leading people to stray. Either the you not like me, and somewhere down the road you get it, then they give you a nice smiley face and say, Jesus loves you, and as long as someone has a Bible and they're preaching, they're good to go, and they're not. I had a friend years ago who I was discipling for a short time. She became a Christian, I thought, and then later she got fell in love with a Mormon guy, became a Mormon, and she's been a Mormon ever since, and my heart breaks for her. The bottom line is if people are not grounded and truly in the Word of God and know the dangers, people are going to get deceived. And, and, there's, and there's a host out there of different kinds of stuff out there. So I want to encourage you today. Get in the Word of God. If you're a new Christian or old Christian, I don't care where you're at. Get in the Word of God more. As we get closer to the end times, whenever that day is that the Lord comes back, I don't know. I'm not one of those nutcases that gives you a date or year. But I can tell you this. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. I'm a little sick right now, but I'm going to get through it. Okay. I wanted to do this video today, and I think it's important because people need to know this stuff. Get in the Word of God. Pray. And, and, and ask, if, if you know somebody who is maybe, and I, and I use this you know, with a lot of caution, somebody who is a little more mature in the faith, who knows the Bible, that isn't caught up in the word faith stuff, get mentor, get discipleship, get a part of a healthy church. There are so many unhealthy churches today. You know, I was thinking about this earlier. I was actually went to the store earlier. And I was getting some stuff, and I was thinking about, you know, like, you know, you can you, you can eat off McDonald's. Say, say you're going to McDonald's. You can eat off McDonald's, and you're going to live. You know, you're, you're not going to die. You won't die of starvation, and you drink sodas all the time. And, and, all, and I used to be a big pop guy, and now it's not much some more. But if all you're ever eating is cheeseburgers and french fries or whatever else, you're going to live for a time. But that stuff's going to start to rot your body. It's going to start... You know, it's going to cause problems and it's going to start becoming unhealthier. And you're going to have physical health problems over time, right? It doesn't happen immediately. If we are unhealthy spiritually, we don't always see it right away. But as we keep on feeding off of the garbage, we become the garbage ourselves. And then we don't even realize how far we are. It's like an addiction, you know what? And eventually you get to where we like you just you don't even realize what's going on anymore, right? So saying all that, let the Bible be the truth for you. Not some not even test what I've said. Don't believe everything I just said. Challenge what I said. Prove me wrong that people like Benny Hen, Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, T D Jakes, who else? Todd White. And these guys. Prove me wrong that they preach the true gospel. According to the scriptures. Prove it. If you think I'm wrong, prove me wrong. I want to see it. Because the Bible teaches that Christ, Jesus said, I came to give them life. He also taught that he died according to the scriptures. Luke chapter 24, verses 44, 45, 46. He died according to the scriptures. His physical body, he was on the cross, according to Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 22. That his physical fleshly body, through his shed blood, he made reconciliation to the world. It's he gave his life. It's his shed blood. Hebrews chapter 7, 8, 9, and 10 talk about his life, his body as a sacrifice. There is nothing in scripture. Let me say this again. There is nothing in scripture that teaches that Jesus had to be spiritually dead in hell. That is a false doctrine from the pit of hell. And if you believe that, I really feel sad for you. And I challenge you to prove that in scripture. And you can't. That's a false... Let me tell you why. You want to know the number one reason why that's false? Here it is. You ready? Because that says that Jesus for a time was no longer holy. And if Jesus was no longer holy, the Bible teaches that any sacrifice that has a blemish or a spot 
according to the book of Leviticus, chapters 1 through 7, if any of those lambs or goats or whatever sacrifice had one little blemish, the whole thing was not valid. It was not worthy for a sacrifice. The Bible teaches in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 19, that Christ was the unblemished lamb, without sin, without fault, without anything at all. Christ gave his life, his sacrifice, has shed his blood and his body as an atoning sacrifice. Nothing that he had to be in hell to die spiritually, to become the first born again heretical doctrine by these word of faith people. It's blasphemous. And I encourage you right now, if you've been a part of this movement in any way, repent of it. And I mean that not like as you're a horrible person. Turn away from it. Get out of it. It's a false movement. And people say, oh, you're just, you know, brought, you know, the whole thing. You're saying the whole, you're, you're, you're being, uh, you're being too judgmental. No, because there's spiritual unhealthy dangers with following these people. I know from experience. I know from family. I know from friends. I know what it's like. I'm not just blowing smoke right now. We live in a time where there's so much deception, so many false gospels, so many false teachers out there. It's hard to keep up. And I know, I know, it rubs people the wrong way. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to end this. It's better be on the right side with God and His Word than to be on the majority and be wrong and be judged. Amen to that. This is Kelly Powers with the Berean Perspective. Thank you for watching. I encourage you, share comments. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and then share some encouragement for me. I like to hear some people out there who agree, biblically agree, not to all of a sudden toot any horn, but I want to know who out there actually knows what I'm talking about this first. And if you've come out of the word faith, like some of the stuff I have and been a part of, please share your story because we need that. We get labeled as the bad people. Think about people who've left the JWs or the LDS. They're called apostates and they get shunned by their family or friends or whatever and they're cast off completely and they're treated horribly. Why? Because apparently they were in the truth and now if they leave it and they say anything bad, they're the bad people. What? I'm telling you this right now. This is shared in love for you because the word of faith the new apostolic reformation, people like your Bill Johnson and your Peter Wagner, Todd Bain, I have friends in it who've been caught up in this mumbo jumbo and it, and it breaks my heart and I'm praying for them. I pray for them daily. I've had some conversations in the past and didn't go very far, but I'm praying for them and I'm praying that somewhere down the road they will see these issues because they've been caught up in this new apostolic. And the new, if you're not familiar with the new apostolic, the new apostolic is basically people saying, you know what, we need to restore the apostolic, you know, authority and there's got to be apostles and prophets and all these people walking around and have little badges and whatever else as if like they did that in the book of acts right like good grief people right get a grip all right i could go on a different tangent there i'm not i'm gonna end with this word of faith is false the preachers are false if they're associated with it there's some caution some dangers i'm not saying everything they say is false and i'm not saying every single person who's a part of that movement who may be considered a pastor is directly a wolf in sheep's clothing, but I have some serious red flags. And if I know they preach a different gospel, like I've already mentioned those people, then I know that they are wolves in sheep's clothing because the Bible warns to be careful. God bless you. May the Lord bless you, give you discernment. May you get into his word. May you seek God in these matters. And may you continue to grow in the grace and knowledge the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and not be led astray by false doctrines and false teachers and sheep, wolves in sheep's clothing that are leading people astray. God bless you.